It was the summer holidays, a few years back now. I was on holiday in America with my family. We were staying in a nice villa in Miami. It was right on the beach, looking over the sea, and it was such a nice place. We used to go there every year. But this time, it was very different. The owner of the villa, who we always used to meet, we were good friends with him, he sadly passed away a few months prior. So, there was a new landlord there. He seemed nice enough, but he was a bit strange. Nevertheless, when we arrived, it was just like any other year. We went in, dumped our bags, and went and sat down on the beach. I was 15 at the time, and I wanted to go and have some fun, so I went off and just went down to the sea. But this, this was where things began to be a bit strange. When I was approaching the sea, I got in, and I just lay there. But as I looked out in the corner of my eye, there was someone standing in the distance, very, very far away, in some kind of cloak, with their hood up. I couldn't quite make out who it was or what it was, but I could just see a faint shadow in the distance, wearing a cloak. I was slightly creeped out by this, because it wasn't something your average tourist would do, but I could only just about see them in the distance, so nothing really was happening. So I just ignored it, and carried on with my day, swimming in the sea. It got to about 5pm, and it was starting to get a bit darker, so my parents said, come on, let's go in. So we walked back to the villa, and went inside. But just as I was approaching the door, I looked behind me, and again, right in the distance, on the end of the road where our villa was, was someone standing there, in a cloak, again. Could it have been the same person? They weren't moving, they were just standing still. I gave them a quick look, and I turned around and walked inside the villa. I was getting really creeped out now because I'd seen this figure twice now, just standing in the distance, but I still couldn't quite make out what it was or who it was, and it wasn't doing anything. So, I just enjoyed my evening with my parents. We sat down, we watched a film, and just relaxed. The villa had four bedrooms, one for my parents, one for my brother and sister, and one for me. I was in the second biggest room, and it looked right out over the beach. It was lovely. So, after our film finished, it was about 10 or 11 at night, and we decided to go to bed. So, I went upstairs and went into my room. I sat on my phone for a bit, scrolling through social media, until eventually I fell asleep. I must have been asleep for about two hours. Until then, it was some kind of buzzing, like a fax sound, but I didn't quite know what it was. And then, bang. Someone was now knocking on my door. My window overlooked the beach, and not the front door, so I didn't even bother looking out. So, I walked out of my room, and looked out the front window, to where the door was. But there was no one there. So I went back into my room, and went back to bed. I thought it was very strange, but I didn't know what it was, so I couldn't do anything. After about two hours, it started. Last night, we not. What the hell was this? I sprung out of bed quickly. I was terrified now. There was some kind of chanting outside. There it was again. I didn't know what to do. But I looked out of my window, my one, looking over to the beach. I was terrified. There was a group of people standing on the beach, all wearing hoods, staring straight up at my window. There must have been about 20 of them, all standing there. And then again, I ran into my brother and sister's room. They were only 11 and 12 at the time, but they could handle scary stuff. So I woke them up and said, guys, 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 there's someone outside, what the hell's going on? Can you have a look? They came into my room and looked out the window to see all the people standing there, again, staring and chanting. My brother and sister froze. They were just as terrified as me. So we all decided to go and awake my parents. We walked into my parents' room and I woke them. They said, what's going on? Why are you waking us? I said, mum, dad, just listen to us. There's some kind of chanting outside, and I looked out of the window, and there's a group of people standing on the beach in hoods. <laughs> really? My mum and dad just laughed. No, mum, I'm serious, I said. There is people standing out there. Yeah, well, it's probably just people walking along the beach, she said. Then she turned over and went back to sleep. But my dad said, okay, I'll have a quick look. So he got up and walked into our room. And when we looked out the window, there was nobody there. The people had gone, and the chanting had stopped. My dad just patted us on the back and said, Come on guys, get some rest. And then he went back to bed. So did we. My brother and sister went back into their room, and I got back into my bed. But then, it got even worse. Yet again, I was awoken. 
by some kind of laughing, screaming, like kids dancing or playing. I thought it must have been my brother and sister just playing around. So I walked into their room and went, guys, quit it. But they were fast asleep. I looked out of my window and the people were there, standing on the beach again. But this time, one of them walked forward towards the house. He lifted his hand and he waved at me. I ducked beneath the window and thought, what the hell is going on? Be up, be, be up. The man at the front said something. Not the chanting, it was almost like he said, bye. But what? I was really confused now. But when I turned back up at the window, they were all gone. There was nobody there, not a soul. I was terrified, but I went back to sleep and I was not awoken again. In the morning, I told my parents and my brother and sister what had just happened afterwards. Of course, my brother and sister believed me. But of course, my parents didn't. The next day when we went downtown, me and my brother and sister went off. And again, in the corner of my eye, right in the distance, I saw someone, again, the hooded person, standing there. But this time, he waved at me. My brother and sister saw him as well. We were scared, and we didn't want this happening again tonight. So, we went to the local fortune teller. And we went and said to her, do you know about any kind of people wearing hoods on the beach at night? She went, you haven't seen them, have you? I said, they, there were people standing there last night, outside of our villa. She said, you've met the hooded cult. I was like, what do you, the hooded cult? What do you mean? She said, yes, the hooded cult. She explained how they were a group of people who had died tragic deaths in Miami, on the beach. She then said, Oh, there's a new leader of them, by the way, at the moment. He died in a villa opposite the beach. I looked at my brother and sister. We said, Was it this villa? And we showed her a picture. She said, Yes. That's where he died. So now we knew. The guy we used to be friends with, the owner of the villa, he was in this cult, almost, at night time on the beach. We were scared, but, but she told us they wouldn't do any harm. Apparently, they were peaceful. The next few nights of that holiday, nothing happened. It's years later now, and to this day, I still don't know exactly what happened that night or who they really were, but I don't want to be seeing them again. It was the summer holidays and I was 11 at the time. Me and my family had gone on holiday to Spain. This was our first time and we decided to stay in a villa. We'd stayed in hotels before in different places and it just wasn't really our thing. We preferred to do our own thing in our own villa and just relax. So we hired a villa and it looked really nice. So we got there, we dumped our stuff and we just went and relaxed by the pool. The first few days and nights were normal, just like every other holiday, relaxing by the beach, walks along the beach and going for nice dinners and relaxing by the swimming pool. But the third night was very, very different. I was awoken in the middle of the night by banging. I was quite scared to be honest because we were in a villa pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Why would somebody come and knock on the door? Nevertheless, I got up and I looked out my window, but there was nobody outside. Then again. This time it was even longer, but there was nobody outside still. Now I was beginning to be very, very scared. There must have been somebody in the house. Well, that's what it sounded like anyway. My parents were fast asleep when I went in their room. But anyway, I woke them up and said, Mum, Mum, Dad, I think there's someone in the house. There's knocking. Did you hear it? They just said, No, just go back to sleep. It's to your mind. You're probably dreaming. But I can assure you, I was not dreaming. Anyway, I went back into my room and listened to what my parents had said. I got back into bed and tried to go back to sleep. But I couldn't. Because there was more knocking. I was really scared now, and I was getting very, very annoyed at this. So, I decided to find where this was coming from. I got out of bed and I walked down the corridor. The knocking was getting louder. It was louder and louder as I walked down the corridor until eventually it hit a climax. It was at the loudest point I had heard it. Now I realized it was coming from in the bathroom. So I walked into the bathroom, carefully opening the door and looking in. At first glance, I couldn't see anything, but then I saw it. I froze when I saw it. The bathtub was filled with blood and a body. There was a dead corpse laying in my bathtub. I didn't know what to do. I just stood there staring 
I was terrified. Eventually I fell to the floor with fear. What the hell was going on here? I ran out and ran into my parents' room and said, Mum, 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 Dad, there's someone in the bathtub. There's a dead guy in the bathtub. They were a bit worried and kind of believed me, but also kind of didn't. Anyway, they got up and they followed me in there. When we walked in there, though, there was nothing. Nothing in the bathtub, not even a drop of blood. I said, but I swear, I saw him. There was someone in there, I promise you. They went, look, son, you're probably having a bad dream or imagined it, okay? Get some sleep. I knew this wasn't my mind playing tricks on me. Well, I thought it wasn't anyway. But I went back into my room and got into bed again. Nothing else happened that night. No more knocking and no more strange things occurring. But the next day, I was sure something happened. That last night was so peculiar, I was sure that wasn't my mind playing tricks on me. So, I looked up the history of the house and thought, maybe something happened, maybe it was some kind of ghost. And I wasn't very surprised, but I was scared when I found out Somebody died. Somebody was killed in that house. The story goes that this man was in the bathtub when somebody murdered him. They stabbed him and drowned him in the bath. That would have explained the blood and the dead body. This was awful. I was terrified now. What was going on here? But at least I knew this wasn't just some kind of bad dream. There really had been a bloodbath inside our villa. It was a few years back and me and my friends had just finished college. We decided to take a gap year and go away to Greece, all of us together, and have a bit of fun. We heard how they're not very strict there and you can get served and all of that stuff, so we thought it would be great fun. When we arrived, we checked into the hotel we were staying at and just wandered around the streets having a look at what was there. The beach was lovely and the town was lovely as well. Lots of nice restaurants, bars and clubs, everything you could imagine. After we'd had a look around, we went back to the hotel and relaxed by the swimming pool. The first few nights were very nice. We had a nice time out at the bars, and it was great fun. But then, it got very strange. On the sixth day of partying, we decided to take a break and just go to the town, go shopping for a bit. There was a small news agent. One of my friends wanted to go in just to get a drink. But the owner of this shop was very, very strange. He was an Indian man, tall, and he wore a hat. When we walked in there, he said, Hello. He didn't say it in a very friendly way more over-friendly and scary. One of my friends nervously said back to the man, Hi, um, can I just get this water, please? The man said, Yes, of course. Where are you staying? We said, Oh, we're just in a hotel up... Where? He said. We said, Well, we're just in... Where? He said. I was very scared at this point. Why was this man asking what hotel we were staying at? Why would it be of any interest to him? Of course, we did not tell him where we were staying. We paid for the drink and we left. That night in the bar, we were talking about the man and how strange it was, why he was asking for our hotel address and what did he want? He was a very strange man. Then the next day, we were on the beach, just relaxing there. And out the corner of my eye, I saw someone walking along the beach. One of those cellar people trying to sell things. It was the man from the shop. He walked up to us all sitting on the beach and said, Hello boys, how are you? We said, hi, yeah, we're good, thank you. He said, yes, very good, thank you. He then turned around and walked off into the distance. But the strange thing was, he was only talking to me and my friends. He wasn't taking any acknowledgement or any other people on the beach. And nobody else on the beach seemed to notice the man at all. That night, we were getting into bed and I heard a sound. It was my room's doorbell. I got up and walked over to the door and looked out of the little window in it. And to my horror, who was standing there? No one but the shopkeeper. I grunted and went, oh, what do you want? And as I swung the door open, there was no one there. I thought, what the hell, this is crazy. There was someone right there just now. He was right there. I looked around the corridors. There was no one, no one at all. I went back inside and just went back into bed and I went to sleep. Without any other occurrences, I woke up in the morning, around 7 a.m., I went down to breakfast with my friends. But when I turned around and looked at the food counter, the man was standing there, looking at us. Me and all of my friends saw him. We thought this was very, very strange, and things were getting very weird now. And how come no one else was seeing him? So I decided to walk over to the man, ask for his name, and ask for the name of the shop. He told me his name, and the name of the shop. 
He waved at me, put his hat on and walked off. Me and all of my friends then went to the help desk at the hotel and we said the name of the shop. And we also said, do you know this news agent? He's been following us around the town and it's getting very, very strange. The woman on the desk said, boys, this guy's dead. We said, what? He's right here. We've seen him every day. She said, no, boys, I promise you. This man, he, he died in a tragic accident in this hotel. I said, in this hotel? W what happened? She said, I cannot discuss what happened, but unfortunately, he passed away in here. Me and my friends will stare at each other in terror. I swear we'd seen this man, but maybe it was some kind of hallucination. But knowing that he died in this hotel, that was very, very strange. We never saw the man again after this, and to this day, I do not know who he really was and what he really wanted from us. Was he a real guy, alive, who had just given us a fake name? Or was it something much, much worse?